squirrel's pretty upset about something. Probably a hawk around would be my guess. If you see peanut or walnut, tell them they better get their butt home. Your mother's worried about them. So I'm in hardcore clean mode, although it's not directly obvious you know, by my surroundings, that's actually what's going on. Cleaning out all the corners and stuff that I've tucked stuff away in for the last, you know, 10 years here. Save stuff probably for the last 20. And recycling what I can, throwing away the other stuff, and it feels pretty good actually. You know, questioning my sanity along the way. Did I really need to save those head bolts, used head bolts from a 1989 Honda Prelude? for the last 20 years? The answer is no, right? Did I believe that I'd run up on a 1989 Honda Prelude that needed a head bolt that I couldn't find anywhere else on the planet? Maybe. Could I find them? Even if I knew I had them? Probably not. So, so I'm getting really close to being ready to cut this floor, this concrete floor of the shop, all the way down the center of the shop. But before I can do that, I have to remove this wall. Now, it should be relatively straightforward. Two before uh, uh, studs on two foot centers, sheet rocked, so there's not a lot there. One circuit running in for the uh, power, which is going to change if I rebuild this back. Now, this is not going to be a demolition, it's going to be a deconstruction, because I plan to reuse these materials. If not, make this thing a little smaller and turn it into a grinding room in the future. That's the thoughts at the moment anyway. But for now, this wall simply has to come down, and that's what we're about to do. So, let's... Let's get started doing it, right? Now when I redo this in the future, I plan to insulate it and put more outlets. You could never have too many outlets. You know, I have to add some breakers to the box before I can do that, but you get the idea. So let me disconnect this power and we'll start pulling this wire. So originally I had, or when I bought the place, there was an AC, or just an electric heater unit in here. And why they had two vents blowing to the outside of this, I'll never know. Uh, you couldn't heat that out there if you tried, especially with the unit that they had. Maybe they figured that out, I don't know. But... So these folding doors on the shop are some of the junkiest things I believe I've ever seen. They may be fine for a closet, but not something you have to go through a lot. But when it was cold outside, I was happy to have these junky doors. But I'm going to take them down, hopefully, and replace them with something better. That's the plan anyway. they got to come down anyway. So here's a failure that I've seen quite often, especially in people's basements where they butt their drywall right up against a concrete floor, or any floor probably for that matter. Get any water, any spillage, oil, whatever, this is going to act like a wick, soak it up, and there you go. You've damaged your drywall and there's nothing you can do about it. You know why they call it drywall? Because it likes to be dry. Actually, I don't know if that's the case, but it does like to be dry, and uh, button it up against the floor 
doesn't keep it dry, right? So this is ruined because of that, at least the bottom section. So I guess you could space this off the floor a bit and then use a kick panel to cover that transition. And then you wouldn't have to worry about it, right? Still lightly wash down your floor and have your drywall as well. So you can tell I sure didn't put this stuff on here or else it'll probably never come off. Wow, look how clean it once was. So I just got back from the lumber store, picked up my drip edge. Not all that I needed, but all that they had that wasn't bent all to pieces. Picked up a piece of decorative ply that'll go on the back side of the shop where I had to break out that uh, piece to uh, replace the truss. So that'll go back in. Then I bought some 16-foot 2x4s to replace the fascia board that runs along the back of the shop that's eaten by bugs. I was shocked. Uh, lumber prices, like, shocked. Lumber prices have probably went up, at least from the few examples that I've seen anyway. Two befores, which a piece that was $3.90 is now 7 bucks, So almost doubled, right? Or, you know, 35%, something like that. A significant amount. So hopefully you bought your lumber before all this wildfires and all this messes went on. Because, man, it's not a good time to buy wood products. Chloe. Put that on top there. Yeah, put it on top of that pile. Uh, it has a pretty white color on. That's gonna, yeah, I mean, that's alright though. I'll either paint it or, or just leave it alone because it's in the back of the shop and nobody will see it. Thank you, love. So the old mouse hotel slash workbench has got to go, right? It's fallen apart, to be honest. This was here when we built, when we built, when we bought the place. It's built out of real fine wood chips that, if it gets any bit wet, you know, there's fine wood chips sandwiched and glued together that if it gets any bit wet, it just falls completely apart. I mean, look at that. There's a random pieces of wood. It's just not the ideal material for a workbench, but you know, it got me by, but I'm going to tear it down and make me something new. Something that will fit my tops much better. These are laboratory tabletops, which, if you're not familiar, are completely awesome. Chemical resistant, acid, you know, doesn't hurt them to a certain point. Uh, they're just really flat, heavy, just nice tops. And I was lucky enough to come across four of them. Obviously, they were used to come out of a, a, a remodel. But... Gonna have to build us a new workbench. Old backdrop's gotta go as well. Well, that whole wall. Everything's gonna have to come over. But this thing's going outside. I've seen enough of it. This is one major POS. That is for sure.
So this is a Simpson strong tie mending plate made for joining wood together and ho or holding it together at a butt joint. You got a join line here. You can see it's got a bunch of spikes. It's just a stamped piece of galvanized sheet metal that you hammer into wood and it holds it together, right? It's called a mending plate and it says specifically on there that it's not for use with trusses, although that's exactly what I'm going to use this for. And this is what you commonly see, very similar to this. Uh, used on trusses to hold them together. I'm sure that's probably a liability uh, thing there. But anyway, this is what I'm going to use on the back side of the truss where I don't have you know, a lot of height to, to spare. And I'm going to tie that truss together permanently. You won't pull those off once they're on. So this is the truss that I repaired in last week's video. I'm using mending plates on the outside simply because they're much, they're lower profile than plywood, which is what I used on the back side of this. Plus mending plates are only you know, two bucks a piece, if that. So they were cheap and uh, allow me to put that decorative ply that covers the outside of this right up next to the truss. You know, they just don't interfere. They sure took a lot of hammering to get them down flush, but once you hammer one of these on, they don't come off. Definitely a, a good product. So that looks good and it's more than adequate. Actually, it's a little over the top on the repair on it, but you know, it feels good to not just do the bare minimum to get by, especially when you're dealing with trusses, right? I don't think there's any reason not to do everything you can to make sure that it's not gonna cause any issue. Although this truss was never at any risk of causing major failure on this building anyway. It's an end truss that sits on the seal plate the entire length and it, does, it just doesn't see that much load, right? So, plus it'll be sheeted, right? And that's another, ad, another added way to hold that thing together. So it's not coming apart, but it looks good. I can check that off the list as done. I'll never have to mess with it again. This last time I'm messing with it for the rest of my life, as long as it's kept dry anyway. Good enough. So just in case you're having a hard time telling where the patch is and the old stuff is, right here is the transition. Kind of hard to tell, but you know, this is the new stuff and that's the old stuff. I'm thinking about either painting this, you know, pressure washing it and uh, painting it to make it all to where it looks really nice. It's obvious that this is a repair, although it's the back of the shop and nobody sees it, and it doesn't matter anyway, but you get the idea. You know, that's uh, kind of an eyesore in a way. But after a year or two, it wouldn't, it would probably blend right in. I am considering, I need to run the numbers on my materials because I have excess of materials to see if I have enough to extend this roof another six or eight inches and get the umbrella of this roof just a little larger on the ends because this wood, is not something I want to replace anytime soon. It's not cheap stuff. It's the same price as plywood, basically. And uh, this could easily last for a very long time, even though it's old, if the umbrella of this roof was extended another six inches, eight inches, right? Just to shield it from the straight down rain. Because it's starting to get some green on it near the bottoms. And anytime wood starts turning green, it's time to clean it, right? Because it's mildew and it's going to promote rot. And we don't want that. So we just used an old piece on the end. I'm not gonna cut that sheet any more than I have to because it doesn't matter. Right. Looks good.
I've always liked the old Mercury switches. You don't see those very often anymore, except in old buildings, right? So I don't know how well you can see that, but they uh, obviously tried to keep the drywall off the floor in here. They just stood a stood a board up on end, a little piece, looks like uh, about two inches or so, and run it the whole length of the length of the room there. Well, that's all the drywall down on this wall. Didn't take very long, right? Just a dirty, nasty job. So here's a real horrible decision I made probably about eight years ago. I had some blow-in insulation put on the ceiling inside this work area to help it help keep it warm, obviously. And it was a battle to keep this stuff off of everything since the day I put it in. It just turns into a fine, you know, dust that settles on everything, and it's not enclosed up there. It's not like it's a boxed-in attic, right? You can you open the big doors and a big breeze come in and it would pick up some of this fine stuff. It would settle on everything. It's just been a nightmare ever since. So I've pulled almost every bit of it out. There's a few little patches up there. Man, I would not use this stuff again in anything for almost any situation. I would use batting, you know, or spray foam maybe. But this stuff, imagine if you had to work on a ceiling panel or take one down. It's just horrible to try to clean this stuff up.
thing's just got to be scooted over about a foot. But that's easier said than done, really. back out as well. I had it shimmed up. I really need to make some feet for it. Some adjustable feet. So this is really a lightweight saw for what I'm doing. This is pretty thick. In some places it's nine inches thick. In some places it's four. So yeah, you can tell when you hit the thinner spots. But if I push this saw very hard at all, it just trips the breaker. It's, it's a job for it to do this. It's a job for me as well. <laughs> Stay bent over this saw here for a couple hours. Because it's probably been an hour just to get to here. You know, it is what it is. I've already done this once on the other side, so I, I knew what I was getting into. Won't be long. I'll be finished with this cut. So the back wall of the shop here, really it just encloses the shop and stands here. It's not a load-bearing wall. Well, I guess it does have that one truss setting on top of it, but other than that, you know, it's just a wall. The business walls are the two on the other sides of the shop across from each other. Those are load-bearing walls, and this one just stands here, pretty much. So I'm going to be cutting along this wall, and pretty much in the section that I cut along, it'll just be floating in the breeze, in a way. It'll still be sitting on the ground, but it was only sitting on the ground before, so it doesn't really make any difference. So that's what I'm going to do, cut along this, and then I'll blend it in, and you'll never know. So we got the big cutout section in the front of the shop that I didn't like, and then in the back of the shop, we have another really bad section. These are both the reasons why I've decided to cut this pad back a little more. You can see we've got a big broken out chunk right here, right under this rock where the building settled and pushed up on the floor. That crack runs all the way out to the wall, and then I've got a crack here that travels right past my cut line uh, that I made right now. So I'm just going to cut this out along the wall and remove this entire section. It's just not good. Imagine trying to tie in right there. Just don't make any sense, right?
So there's something nice about getting off work, <laughs> having your first cup of coffee, getting back into your dirty clothes, and doing something for yourself instead of for someone else all the time, right? Nice. Kind of enjoyable, no matter what you're doing, actually. So I'm just pulling off this fascia board and it's not in that great a shape. Probably won't be able to reuse it. Maybe some of it, right? But I'm doing this so I can extend these truss tails out before, before it's time to put the roof on, right? So all this lumber that I purchased for my temporary support wall, all the so truss supports, all these two befores are now gonna turn into truss tails to make my roof longer. There we go. That should be almost enough to do the entire roof, which is good because otherwise it was just doing nothing now. So there we go, side one's done. Just gotta do the other side. That goes quick, pretty simple uh, add-on really. And we'll be plenty strong. Obviously they're, like I said, they're gonna get cut off all at the same time and they're only gonna be a foot extra. So not, not adding that much really, but enough to help. So that doesn't look very good at the moment, but it will, once they're all cut to the same length, it'll It'll look really good, and I don't think that adding that extra foot of overhang will make this roof look odd. You'll, it'll definitely look like it's got a substantial overhang, but I don't think it'll look funny anyway. Any more than that may start getting a little excessive. But now we've got a foot overlap. All every one of those extensions is attached to the existing truss with at least a foot of you know overlap, right? Plus we're having five eighths ply on the roof. So I'm not even a little worried that that foot extra of overlap is going to cause any weakness issue in the roof. Now, if we got three foot of wet snow, you know, it still wouldn't matter, to be honest. Be just fine. It's going to be great. All right, guys, that's it this week. It's looking good. Always like the look of a building that has a slightly larger than normal overhang on the roof. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but, you know, they do serve a purpose, right? Keep the rain from falling directly at the foundation of the building, keep the walls cleaner, keep your windows cleaner, you know, on and on and on. It's nice. But I've got excess shingles and I've got some excess sheeting, so it's the time to do it is now, right? Got to get the concrete guys here to give me another estimate on my floor because obviously I've cut more out of it. Get my dad's skid steer here, bust out that floor, on and on and on, right? It just never ends. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. It is appreciated beyond belief, believe me. And I wouldn't know what to do without you. So 
that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day.